what's going on youtube welcome back to beamer fam in today's video i'm going to show you guys and tell you guys and go through with you guys everything that is wrong with my bmw e39 m5 from 2002 which also has 183,000 miles on it so on paper this car really should be falling apart but we'll get into exactly how that's not the case at all as far as modifications go the car is pretty much bone stock aside from the exhaust and just a few cosmetic modifications done to the car so you know you're really going to get an idea for you know how these cars really handle in terms of i guess maintenance and just you know how often do they break um, this one is basically stock for the most part so just loud very loud so that being said we're just gonna we're just gonna do a quick walk around the car so you guys can see exactly what's done to the car and then from there i'll go into in depth exactly what's wrong with the car and you know what it what what needs replacement you know what stuff is broke so on and so forth so so for those of you guys who are new to the channel this is my 2002 bmw m5 looking quite just majestic here in the goddamn winter setting when you put the hand on the frame it just automatically looks like a classic bmw jeez we have the euro spec headlights instead of the us spec the US spec pretty much makes that side marker orange. On top of that, I have matte black front kidney grills. I think it just gives it a more sporty look in the front. On top of that, we have window tint at Beamer Fam. Stock wheels. You can see my tips right there. Very dirty, very dirty. As far as the exhaust goes, we have a Rogue Engineering X pipe and a muffler to delete. So it has stock cat and it has high flow resonators, but no mufflers. This thing's loud as hell. So yeah, that's pretty much the car. Um, as far as the interior goes, needs a detail bad but we have the two-tone ostrich leather sports seat option from bmw back in the day and all of these cars came with a six-speed manual as you can see this is the facelift car so we do have navigation we got the facelift steering wheel i'm not gonna lie it's, it's a proper m5 you know it's real prop that being said let's go through everything which actually isn't that much believe it or not that's wrong with the car so so the first thing on the list is the rust we got some rust going on so this is almost a 20 year old car so we've got a little bit of rust going on in the in the usual spots we've got some right there got some down there and just the pretty much the jack points of the under panel of the car we got some right there as well we come around back we got a little bit down by the license plate we got a little bit on this side as well down there that's pretty much all the rust on the car not happy about it but i got this car for a killer deal so can't be mad you know what i'm saying and the thing's extremely reliable as you'll find out so item number two is called the cv joint which is actually under the car it's like kind of by the drive shaft under the car in the center by kind of by the exhaust around here when i go from a standstill to driving so when i have it in first and i engage the clutch and i'm starting to drive then i'll hear this metal kind of like clink 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 when it engages the gear um that's basically a cv joint uh, it's not really critical um i should get it replaced but it's common on not only e39 m5s but a lot of m cars the e92 m3 my brother's car has a little a little rattle to it normal due to higher mileage and aid that being said um that's something i do plan on replacing here soon it's not critical so it's not like catastrophic if i don't replace it right now item number three is actually in the back and it has to do with this here trunk normally i have a unlock button a lock button and then a trunk open button but if i you know unlock it and hit and hit the open the trunk button it, it, it not, ain't not happening and then that's because the trunk actuator is actually broken on this i actually need to replace it it's like a motor that automatically opens the trunk by itself but since that's out i have to go in and manually open it like that you know it's just the little things with this car and also that brings me to number four which is also in the back so now we have the trunk trunk open basically long story short guys the right license plate bulb will never turn on and that is because the wiring that we have in here is pretty much split in other words so i have to order this whole new housing right here and maybe some of the wires or I could have, you know, an electrician go in there and put the wires and tape them back together. We'll see which route I go. But nevertheless, it's one of those things where it's just kind of annoying because the license plate bulbs in there are brand new. One of them is never going to turn on because of the wiring. So I've got to get that sorted. And number five, oh my, look at the paintwork real quick. That color is amazing. Uh, but number five is actually on the interior of the car. Something very minor as well. So we come over here. 
and this little gate right here, it kind of broke on me. Um, it kind of snapped. This is actually supposed to be a full gate that covers these coins right there. But that kind of, I think half of it stayed in there. So this is kind of just hanging out. Well, gotta get that replaced as well. So aside from everything, I just listed the five things that are wrong with this car. And I think we all need to appreciate how little those things are. This car is amazing. I've put in over 30,000 miles on this car in the last three years. So basically, you know, 10,000 miles a year I've driven this car, dailyed it through, through winter, through summer, spring, all the seasons. And, um, you know, I have had to replace some things. You know, it's got a new clutch, new timing chain guides and chains and, you know, a few other maintenance items here and there. If you guys want more information on what I had to replace on this car to keep it in this such good condition, you know, at 183,000 miles. Make sure you guys go check out the description. I left a lot of information for you guys to check out in case you are planning on buying one of these cars. But, man, I got to say, only five things and they're all small? That wasn't bad buy. Hmm. <laughs> The big V8 M car from back in the day. You know, I thought it was gonna be super unreliable. You hear all the stuff about the E60 M5, you know, the V10 cars, and you know, there's a lot of scary stuff when you're talking about a used high mileage BMW M car, especially that's 20 years old. And you know, here I am dailying the car, not really having that many problems with it. As you can see, these cars are great to purchase. The main thing you're gonna have to worry about is the body work on these cars. A lot of places where it's easy to rust it's just you know some engineering faults back in the day you know they, some things that looking back on it they could have engineered stuff better to have water not sit and have it corrode certain spots but yeah guys that's that's my baby man you know i hope you guys found this video useful and uh i don't know if there's anything wrong with my car that i don't i didn't say but you guys know let me know so i know you guys are gonna be like eric what the hell when you got back from la i thought the car was gonna be done no rust, repainted, almost restored in a sense. I know, I know, that was the plan, but the rust guy originally told me the job would take five days, and for, for whatever reason, he basically said it, it you know, it's gonna take 10 days, and I really needed my car as soon as I got back, so I pretty much just went ahead and delayed the, the rust job for a time where I can at least get a rental car or maybe another car until then. Basically, it's still getting the rust deleted, it's still getting, you know, the, the paint refreshed and repainted and all that stuff. But we're just going to have to wait a little bit longer, guys. Hopefully, I can get it for my birthday in December. So, But that is the update on that note. Aside from that, we're going to get new tires for the car as well already. And so we should have those mounted here in the next few days. They're already ordered. I'm still loving the M5. Really hard to think about selling it. I don't think I'm going to do that anymore. Just, just thinking about it and just driving the car, even in the winter when it's mucky and miserable like this, it's the most fun and pure driving experience. I know, period. Just overall, you know, it fits my needs. It's, it's almost like it was tailored for a brother like me. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's the kind of car I want. You know, I don't care about the price. I don't care about how new it is. I don't care what it looks like, what it sound like. This checks everything off the list for me regardless. You know what I'm saying? So. I know some of you guys are going to be like, oh, upgrade your car. You're, you're driving around in an old BMW. I don't care. I, I really don't care because this car fulfills me. It really does make me happy. And, you know, driving these newer cars, it really makes you appreciate, like, the amount of energy and emotion that BMW spent on this car back in the day. Because it's not the same anymore, y'all. It's not the same. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you guys found this video useful or helpful in any damn way, please hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button for more content like this. And I'm gonna leave y'all with some proper M content because you gotta hear the damn thing. You gotta see it drive at least. You know what I'm saying? So let's get right into that, man. I appreciate you guys once again, and I'll see you guys in the next video.